Well, what's up gamers, how you doing? In this video, I'll be reviewing the new Ojoid N2L single board computer. This thing is super powerful for the size. It's mini, but might, let me tell you. what Basically what this is, is a slimmed down version of the Ojoid N2 Plus, which I have in my right hand here. It's about 60% the size. It's about two inches by two inches in, in width and height and diameter. Um, it's super tiny. They've removed some things, so to cut down on costs and the size, of course. They removed two USB slots. The N2 Plus has four USB 3s. This only has one USB 3 and one regular USB. Uh, it has HDMI out, which is obviously very important, a power supply in, which obviously you need. Does not come with a power adapter, just so you know. You need to purchase that separately. It's only about 550, so it's not terribly expensive, but just keep in mind, if you get this on a hard kernel, which I'll put a link in the information below, uh, definitely you'll need a power supply if you don't have one already. Uh, also, it doesn't have the Ethernet cable in, it doesn't have the battery uh, slot as well, some things they've, they've taken out. So things that they've removed aren't necessary, they're optional. In comparison, this thing is 83 US dollars for the, for the four gig, uh, gigabyte version. This is 69 US dollars for the four gigabyte version. So pretty equivalent. I would say this is similar in size to the Raspberry Pi 4, also similar in what it can do with the Raspberry Pi 4. I'll put the specs for both the N2L as well as the Raspberry Pi 4 on the screen here, as well as the information. You can't see the different comparisons. The issue with the Raspberry Pi 4, and I do like that, uh, Raspberry Pi has the brand recognition. A lot of people know Raspberry Pi, and because of that, you have some emulation that you can do, emulators on there that are supported that are not necessarily supported currently on the N2L. But that's, I say currently, I wanna emphasize that because that's currently, it's gonna change, of course, as people get to know this unit. Also, the benefit of having the N2L is availability. The Raspberry Pi 4 is hard to find. Supply chain is not very good for it at the moment. You can go to Amazon, eBay, and other sites, third-party vendors, and you're gonna be paying over $100 for a Raspberry Pi 4. I just did the other day, I bought a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, for some I needed. Um, and so they're not readily available. This thing currently is, so you're gonna be paying about half the price as you would currently for the Raspberry Pi 4, so keep that in mind. So in this video, I'm going to show you what this thing can do in terms of emulation. The emulation I'm gonna show you is run through Emulec. I will, this is 4.6 plus. The things on this, this oh, I say plus because there's gonna be Jaguar emulation that's currently available. Uh, the build, shout out to my good friend, Kurt, AKA Qbert Addict one here on YouTube. Good friend of mine, super knowledgeable about emulation. They have a great community as well, Patreon. I'll put a link for that for those who wanna find out more uh, about this build and it's really cool. You can see what it does, but it's pretty amazing what this small thing can do in terms of emulation. Let me know what you guys think. One more quick thing. When you do get this, I would recommend a USB extender. You can get these on Amazon, fairly cheap. Uh, this has four slots available. I've got my Wi-Fi dongle here, so I got Wi-Fi, I got my Bluetooth dongle here, so I can do a Bluetooth controller. Uh, you'll need several USB ports because keep this in mind, for, for example, I'm showing you where I have an external hard drive that's gonna take up one USB slot. And then if you wanted to have a controller, that'd be the, the second one, but if you wanna add Wi-Fi, you wanna do a light gun or any other devices, you're gonna need this extender. So these are available and these will work just fine. Um, so really at the end of the day, you're gonna be paying about as much as you would be for the N2 Plus. However, this thing is lots more small. It's more form fitting to different devices that are smaller and it's, it's awesome. So let's take a closer look at this thing. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. So I just wanna show you, before I show you uh, Emulac and some of the games this thing can play, I wanna show you how actually tiny this is. Now granted, I have uh, huge hands, so it looks a lot smaller than it is, but it, it, trust me, it is tiny. Uh, and I just wanna show you, it does have a micro SD card slot here. Right now, I currently have a 512 gig one, and there it does come in nice and in, in and out fairly easy. Uh, fan, really quite fan, does hardly ever speed. I, ever seen, I hardly ever see this thing spin at all. It doesn't really get overheat, but there's a fan there just in case it overheats. This is where the power is plugs into the HDMI, the two USB ports, as I mentioned before. Just really, it's crazy how, how small this thing and compact in comparison here is what the N2 Plus looks like. You can see it's significantly smaller, right? Now let's take a closer look at some gameplay. Thanks. Here is Emulec 4.6 Planet Odroid N2L. Great job to Kirk, his team, for this layout is really good. All, all the emulators on the right. It's got a ton of emulators you can see, all kind of categorized by 
system, right, by uh, Atari or Sega, Nintendo, etc. There is a media player as well. I've got some classic cartoon shows from the 80s loaded on here. Donkey Kong, for example. So it does play media, which is awesome. This can do more than just gaming. First game I'll show you is on Fireburn Neo. It's an emulator, very similar to, to MAME. Prefer it better than MAME, but this game's called Pink Sweets. It came out in Japan circa 2006. And it's a really fun shooter. It's a bullet hell shooter, vertical, and it's, it's super challenging. It's got a really fun anime vibe to it. You'll see here in a second. Uh, a really just visually, it's it's amazing. And there's so much you can choose between four different vehicles or ships to choose from. And there's so much going on, so many moving parts. And as you can see, there are uh, frames per second listed in the top right corner. So you can see that it's staying fairly consistent to 58 to 60 frames per second. Sometimes it's dropping down to 55, but you can see there's a lot of objects on the screen at one time. And this game does have some intentional uh, frame drop, right? It does have some intentional slowdown. That's because the game, they wanted you to have some some ch you know, chance of winning the game, right, in some ways. But overall, you can see it plays really smooth overall at 60 frames per second. I just think visually, it looks really good with the, the backgrounds and and what's going on. I love the, these bullet hell shooters. This is definitely one to check out. It's called Pink Sweets. I don't know if this ever came out in North America, to be honest. I don't recall seeing it in the, in the arcades. And we'll move on to the next one here. It's another, uh, this is called Mushi Mushihimi. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not quite sure it's another shooter also uh, on the arcades. Came out in Japan. I believe it came out in 2009. This is another example of a lot of objects moving on the screen at the same time. And I just wanted to show you the frame rate and show you that now it's just loading the game right here. So give it a second, but show you that it does uh, hold up fairly well, uh, the frame rate. Go ahead and add oh yeah, November 27th, 2009. Go ahead and add some credits. This game also has a really cool kind of anime feel to it as well. There's different difficulties. You've got original Maniac. I mean, they're out of fear what the other one is called, but uh, these are different characters you can choose between a male or female, which is a male. And he's flying on some bird. Uh, and it's got some kind of prehistoric Jurassic Park feel to it because there are dinosaurs. You get music really good. Uh, you, you can collect all the yellow power-ups and points. Avoid the bullets. There's different power-ups. There's a great power-up here. And you almost have to pay attention to the purple bullets, right? You can't avoid those. They're all pattern-based. That's cool. Looks like Godzilla there. So much going on. But you can see in the top right corner, really holding strong at 60 frames per second. No slowdown at all in this game at all. Oh, I'm going to get hit. Let me go avoid it. Oh, I got hit finally. The first boss, first level, is really cool. I'll show you here in a second. Just a stunning game. Looks awesome. Oof. I don't know how I voted, voted those bolts there. But I believe we're coming up on the first boss. I'm gonna say gotta pass this guy. Get the power up. Here he comes, this is the first boss. This is a dinosaur, like a T-Rex. How cool does that look? I think it's just a really fun, really fun. We're gonna check out the Panasonic 3DO as well. Uh, this works great. One of the game, one of my favorite games for the Panic 3DO is Crash and Burn. I remember my friend growing up in middle school had a 3DO, so I, had a, I used to always go to his house after school and we play the 3DO. And this is one of the games, I believe, it was an early launch title for the 3DO back in the day when it came out. And we used to play Crash and Burn all the time. And you could daisy chain the controllers together. That's how you'd play multiplayer because the controllers would connect. And I remember being cheap. He'd always pull out my controller and being cheap. But I believe this game was developed by an Australian company because all the characters are have an Australian accent, which I think is neat. And uh, just visually, this game is a racer, but it's kind of you got weapons and stuff. So 
Check out Cross Course 1, Circuit 1. I think visually this game really holds up fairly well. I think 3DO was a really cool system. Very expensive when it first came out. Give some time to load the game, show you how long it loads. There it goes. I think I remember how to how to go. Uh, for the action button to go, gas. Oh, there you go. There you go. I don't know. got a little late start there, but... You see my, my guns. I have 100 bullets. You can get different weapon upgrades. Got to watch out for the ice. Different view angles and things like that. But really fun shooter. And I think this game only came out for 3DO. I believe this is a, this is a 3DO exclusive to my recollection. I don't think it came out for the PlayStation 1 or, or Saturn to my knowledge. You, you damage pretty quickly though. I'm already starting to catch fire here. If you bump into walls, you get hit by bullets. You can damage it. It's kind of almost like crash and burn in that sense, right? Another game, uh, Road Rash, speaking of which, this is another great game. I have to mute this part because the soundtrack is a lot of sound garden and some great grunge music. I do want to show you, you can turn, actually turn the engine sound off, which is in the options menu, which is cool. The engine sound in this game is very annoying, so it's kind of interesting that Electronic Arts decided to add that in this game. This is one of my favorite Road Rash games. I, I think EA is really overdue for a Road Rash title, to be honest. I think the last one that came out for console was back in, like, 2000, if I recall. Early 2000. Um, and they're just long overdue for a new Road Rash. I think there was one that came out for mobile in 2009 called Road Rash, but that was for their mobile platform, not for console. What's so funny about this game is, like, people randomly walking in the streets. Like, I don't know what the deal with that is, right? You can run over people. And you can punch, you get different chains and, and clubs and beat beat your uh, opponent and kick them and punch them, etc. You gotta watch out for police. Just visually, it's a really fun game. Probably my favorite Road Rash game. Definitely. That one was ported to the Saturn as well as PlayStation 1. Uh, but I think 3 day one's my favorite port. Here's a great port for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo for the 3DO. This is probably one of my favorite home console ports. Visually, it's great. It's arcade quality and also... Audio-wise, the soundtrack sounds really good. Um, and so if you have a 3DO, you haven't played Street Fighter 2 for it, this is one of the better ports. So there are a lot of not great games for 3DO, to be honest. But there's a handful of gems. And these are a few of the, the gems I want to show you that, that definitely give a 3DO to check out. So you can change the different speeds and turbo speeds. This game has been ported to so many different consoles, right? But this is definitely one of the better ones for the home market. Dang, Ken is, Ken is whooping me right real quick. Once you're in the corner there, it's tough to get out of it. One last 3DO game I want to show you before we move on to the console. And this is a classic. I think most of you guys will know this one. It's one of the first first-person shooters that was released. At least to my recognition, I know there was other ones that came out before this one, but this is one of the first main ones that came out. Came out for PC mainly. I remember playing on PC initially. It's by id Software. And you guesses, yes, Wolfenstein uh, for 3DO. This game, so classic, and it's a game I think that if it were to come out today, I think it'd be probably too controversial, to be honest. Because, um, this, by the way, this 3DO port is a really great port of Wolfenstein. Uh, the one for the Super Nintendo, not so much. They cleaned it up a little bit, but... The fact that you shoot dogs, that there's like swastikas on the door, that there's like pictures of Hitler on, you know, paintings of Hitler hanging on the door. I just don't see, I know there's other modern Wolfensteins that come out in recent times, but um, this is like super, I mean, the fact that they speak German to you and you're shooting Germans. I mean, I know even back when Super Nintendo, they, they cleaned it up, uh, got rid of the swastikas and, you know, controversial back then, but even super controversial now. But Wolfenstein for the 3DO is definitely a great port. Visually, it looks great. Um, playing this control-wise takes a little to get used to if you're used to first-person shooters today. You only have one D-pad, but it's awesome. Okay, we're going to switch to different console here. Check out the Philips CDI. Uh, there are some gems on the CDI. I want to show you a few that are kind of more unique. Believe it or not, Nintendo had licensed both a Mario game and three Zelda games for the 3DO. Officially licensed games. I'm going to show you all of them. Or a couple of them, anyway. First, I want to show you uh, Mario. Uh, this is <laughs> a really interesting one. And basically, what happened, a little short story here, Nintendo had partnered with Philips to create the Nintendo CD, right? For the, But they broke them. The, the, the relationship got strained. They, they broke apart. And so through that agreement, I guess they had, they basically Nintendo said, okay, you can still make some Nintendo games. This is Mario Hotel. 
Uh, this is the intro. The voice acting is not great. It kind of reminds me of the original cartoon back in the, the 90s for the Mario cartoon that came out late 80s, early 90s. Uh, and it was Hotel Mario, not Mario Hotel, I apologize. But um, so you some some gameplay here. And the premise is basically it's it's a puzzle game. you got to close all the doors, right, uh, and avoid enemies and collect coins, right? Sounds pretty straightforward. Uh, controls are pretty interesting because you'll, you, when you start the game, you start kind of within the door. you got to push down to start. If you don't do that, it took me a while to figure that out. Uh, you know, you kind of figure out what to do. Uh, I can take the elevators, kind of elevator action in a way where you have to take the elevators, different stages, and, and close all the doors. You can jump and kill the, the Koompas right here. Or Goombas. This is probably one of the better Nintendo licensed games for 3D or for the Philips CDI. The Zelda ones aren't great at all. They're kind of notoriously bad. I'm really shocked that Nintendo actually licensed these games. It's pretty shocking. Later on in this game, there are turtles and other enemies too. I don't know how many levels there are stages. This is obviously the first one, so it's fairly straightforward, fairly easy. This is the one of the other Zelda games I want to show you. This is the Wand of Gamelon. It came out in 93. Um, this is one of uh, the three that came out. And voice acting, I'm going to show you a little bit of the voicing, voice acting. Um, let's go check it out. Start game. Zelda, Duke Onklet is under attack by the evil forces of Ganon. I'm going to Gamelon to aid him. But father, what if something happens to you? I'll take the Triforce of Courage to protect me. If you don't hear from me in a month, send Link. Ampa! Don't worry, Zelda. The Triforce of Wisdom promises the king will safely return. Enough. My ship... Yeah, the... <laughs> This is wild because I don't know why the animation is so weird. It's like they zoom in and out. It doesn't make any sense. It's like almost looks like it was done in Mario Paint. It's really, really bad animation. Um, I'm not quite sure what they were thinking, but let's jump to the gameplay. There's a map here. Um, continue game. Kind of choose different areas of the map to start. I think the only area I can start is this car replace. I'm pushing the wrong button to get to it, so I apologize for that. But. We go and start. If you're not careful, that's the exit right there, that Triforce there is the exit. So you gotta be careful. Cause naturally I feel like I should go right and then that kind of brings you back to the map. So again, doesn't make much sense. Pretty large size, decent sized map though, the world. It looks like it's hand drawn. So like give them credit for that, which is, which is interesting. But plays totally different than any other Zelda game that you've played. Uh, there's like warthogs and things like that. Even this looks like it's hand drawn. You play as Zelda, you don't play as Link, also, which is interesting for a Zelda game. And now I'm just gonna die. Yeah, so that's how good this game is. The other Zelda game, uh, Zelda Adventure, this is probably the best of the three that came out. It's more traditional Zelda game. Let's go and start, start a new one. And create. Enter thy name. Look how slow this cursor moves. It's like ridiculous. Now this looks like I don't know how to explain the graphics here. It's interesting because it's almost just like photographed. I don't know. It's weird. Go ahead and play. Kind of jumps you right into it. Not much story, background story before you jump into it. This is like your your map. You can get different. We I don't have any weapons at this point. And what's really annoying about this is every time you change a screen, it like loads, and it's very slow to load. So you got to watch. I, first off, I have to get a, a weapon. I got to get a sword or some boomerang or something. Zelda. Um, but you can see, it, I'm again. I'm playing a Zelda, not Link. And graphically, it just looks really interesting. Oh, watch out for the enemies. See again, I don't have any weapons. Oh. So at least it plays more traditional than your typical Zelda game, Zelda. right? The adventure ones. This game, by the way, is super expensive if you're to buy it physically. 
I don't even know how much it goes for now because I know in the past it went for hundreds. I mean, it's crazy rare, crazy expensive. It's definitely the harder of the three Zelda games to get for the 3DO. Or for, I keep saying that, for the Philips CDI. Kind of unique. Again, unique. Visually, it's very unique. You can see how that loading just gets really old fairly quick, though. All right, we'll continue uh, to a different platform. PlayStation Portable, uh, one game I want to show you. Several great games for the PlayStation Portable, I love it. And I have them starred at the top, I can star games and bring them to the top, or it's all alphabetical. I'll show you Outrun, uh, 2006, Coast to Coast. This is a really great port for the PlayStation Portable. He went in 06, 2006. Sumo Digital worked, worked on a lot of the Outrun games. Of course, the Ferrari license, going back to the original Outrun game, was Ferrari license. I love the Outrun games for the arcades as well. I mean, this game, I believe, came out in the arcade as well, but we'll just dive right into it. Here we go. This is playing at 30 frames per second, but you can see it really... Visually looks great, sounds great, controls really good as well. Hard to believe it was a design for handheld. I think the push of portable is an excellent system, I really liked it. Okay, moving on to the Jaguar. Now, this is kind of a work in progress. There's a few games that don't work for it as well. Uh, Rayman, I want to show you, does work for, for the Jaguar, and um, there's, again, a lot of bad games for the Jaguar, but there are actually a handful of good ones. This Rayman is probably a, a good, really good port for the Jaguar. I really like NBA Jam a lot. Um, there's, there's, there's several games for the Jaguar that are really good. Um, Tempest 2000, although Tempest 2000 plays a little slow on this, so they're, they're tweaking it, getting to work right. Jaguar is a really hard system to emulate for one reason or another. But you can see this game uh, playing at uh, pretty close to 60 frames per second. And stay in there, so. I think Ubisoft did a great job with these Raymond series. They're all kind of unique and it's visually they're a lot of fun. Yeah, I just love the, the Raymond series. They're so fun. Okay, I'm gonna go to ports. There's a hand put ports, like Sonic ports. There's a lot of them are, are fan made in some cases, right? So this is Streets of Rage Remake. This is a fan made game. Sega actually took this down. It's no longer available to download. It's hard to find anyway. And it's basically Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3 elements. And it's just like a, a fan made version that they feel like made a better job. So, love Streets of Rage games, of course. This is definitely one to check out. I'm playing this for the ports for the PC originally. It came up for the PC. But yeah, when Sega caught wind of this, they were not too thrilled and they removed it right away. I'm fairly close to it. You can see the aspect ratio too, it's, it's playing you know, a wider screen, unlike the original feature ratio. That right there is different. Not playing 4 by 6 One of the better soundtracks, I think, of any game out there for retro, for sure. Okay, I want to show you some other f cool features that you can do with this, with emulation. Uh, for example, many games have manuals, like there's a lot of cool, so let's see Donkey Kong, go to view options, check it out, menu options. Um, oh, here it is, this is a view game manual. And people have actually taken the time to scan the man manuals in manually, which is really cool. So it's a case of thousands of games, various, not just in NES, but other games as well. We'll check out DuckTales as well, I'll show you this, the manual. I think that's so cool. Another really top thing, people preserving it. I think awesome feature. The people have also made HD remakes of classic games. The first I'm going to show you is Castlevania. Uh, this is the HD remake, and this is playing on NES emulator. 
And, th and this one is the, the music, the original music, but it's got the reskinned updated graphics. Look at the shadow there, it looks super cool. I think the Castlevania music in itself, the original one is, is classic, shouldn't be touched. So if you want, but you know, there's also HD remake I'm gonna show you here that has updated music and it's got like metal music and it sounds so cool. I mean, it's so cool that what fans are doing to these games through emulation, enhancing them, making them a better experience. Here's another one, Legend of Zelda Remastered. This is for the NES, believe it or not. Visually, it looks like it's playing on Game Boy Advance. Um, it's got the updated music. Updated, obviously, uh, visually, this does not look like NES, right? It just it looks like it's GBA. It looks like a GBA game, but it's the original NES, the Zelda game, Legend of Zelda. Whole new way to play it which I think is very, very cool. At some point I'm gonna have to go through here and, and play this game again through this style. Uh, also, Super Nintendo MSU One. This is uh, enhanced audio. First game I'm gonna show you is Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country, I think is probably one of the best audio games for the Super Nintendo. But you can kind of see subtle things with like monkeys in the background yelling and all that. Um, sounds really good. I, and this is again, this can, these MSU One games can actually play on a flash cart through the Super Nintendo, which I think is really cool. I think it's a special flash cart, but I think that's so incredible that people can take the ROMs, enhance the audio, make them almost CD quality. It's almost as if like the sake Nintendo CD came out right uh and just i think the audio changes the game experience completely so there's there's a handful of games like there's like over 100 or so in super Nintendo games like this where they've enhanced the audio and not just audio right the next game i'm going to show you the msu one is we're going to stick with the zelda theme right this is the legend of zelda link to the past and this is uh for the super Nintendo. Right, but check out the intro. I'm not gonna talk here during it, but let's just go ahead and, and start start a new game. And I wanna show you what people have done with the intro of this game. It's mind blowing. Let's take a closer look. for the day. Let's head home. All right, Uncle. My first harvest. Well, these apples are perfect. Just the right color and shine. Let me see. Mm. <laughs> this is a great start for the season. This has got to be the best apple orchard in all of Hyrule. Everyone's gonna travel here to try my apples. Your apples, huh? I've even got a name for the orchard. Oh, yeah? And what is that? Well, it would make sense to name it Link's Legendary Apple Orchard. <laughs> What's so funny? Link, do you ever think about leaving the farm? You always wanted to become a knight of Hyrule. There is far more out there than just apples. I don't think I'm needed for that. And I wouldn't want to carry around a heavy sword and shield all day and miss out on home-cooked meals like this. <laughs> well said. Let's eat. Uncle, thank you for everything. You protected me after my parents died, and have been taking care of me ever since. You're like a father to me, and I hope one day I can be as kind and honorable as you. You're growing up, Link. You're growing up.
I am Zelda. Who are you? I... I'm... I'm Link. Link. You must help me. I'm in the castle dungeon. Hurry! There's a secret passage behind the bush at the castle gate. How cool is that? That that's actually playing on a Super Nintendo. I also want to uh, share with this. I've tried to show you this before. If you leave it on a system, there it actually goes to a video intro as well. Each each emulator does that. I think that's cool. This is a Dreamcast, for example. I think that's so cool. But sticking with the Dreamcast, I also want to show you an example of what fans have done to enhance game experience. We're gonna check out. I showed you Rayman before for the Jaguar. We're gonna check out Rayman Two for the Dreamcast, and this is the HD. Uh, Look, and you'll see it looks incredible. They've added kind of HD filter to it. They've cleaned up the the sprites. Let's go ahead and load it up. And it looks beautiful and stunning in HD. And just another example of what fans are doing to games to really make them better. And again, this is all playing on that one tiny little Odroid N2L. You can see the VMU also in the top left corner. I think that's really cool. So you see that playing at right now it's 56 frames per second but it will play typically at 60 frames per second you can see it already it looks pretty clear hd we'll jump ahead some gameplay here's right jump right into the action playing at 60 frames per second i haven't played this game much but i'm gonna definitely have to dive into it and play it more for sure because it looks a lot of fun and just looks gorgeous in the with the re-rendered graphics, HD graphics. That's really good. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think about this. Have you played it? What other Dreamcast games do you recommend? Let me know. Um, also want to show you some Sega Mega Drive or slash Genesis MSU games. These are games that are updated music and in many cases, the aspect ratio is also larger. First game I'm going to show you is Outrun. Absolutely love this game, the soundtrack. This particular screen is 4x3, but the rest of the game is actually 16x9, which the original one was not. You can tell by the audio here. It's also got the orchestrated music. And there's parts of it has got like guitar, riff, and, and kind of jazz, piano. Uh, I think it just sounds really, really good. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, but overall, really impressed by this unit. Let me know what you guys think. Guys, leave a comment below. Thanks for subscribing as always. Take care, and of course, game on.